Hello gardening friends, welcome back. Today is a beautiful overcast day and we've got some gardening chores to get done today. But I just wanted to give you just a super quick update on the annual and perennial cut flower garden. I feel like you guys have missed out so much because I just haven't been able to film everything. I had to get things in the ground and with the gardens and work and running a household and chasing after little ones, I just have not been able to film everything that I wanted to. But you guys, it feels so awesome to have almost the entire garden planted up. We've got these four rows in the front as you can see. And I'm putting cattle panel trellises down the center, going all the way back to the sunflower bed. And then if you haven't followed along, we have a big blank space right there because it floods pretty bad right there every time it rains. So I decided to skip a few feet and then <clears throat> start planting. But we're going to have our arbors right here and it will go through here we'll have lots of beautiful things growing up over it we've got hyacinth bean love in a puff let me take a step back here and show you we've got our sweet peas oh my gosh i'm about to get my first sweet pea bloom so exciting i feel like with the rain the last couple of the last couple of days those have grown like a foot. But, yeah, so we will have our little walkway coming down the center here. And then we will have sunflowers. Oh, it's starting to rain hard. <laughs> we will have sunflowers all across the back there. And then we will have this area here in the center um, where I was going to just let the grass grow back until we get more dirt or compost next year. Um, but I also have decided to, where you see that cardboard right there and right there to plant more sunflowers. Um, and then all across the back of this fourth row, I'm gonna have really tall amaranth. So I thought it would be cool to kind of have all those tall things growing in a rectangle and it would kind of create like a little secret garden area where my kids could like come and sit and play and I don't know play hide and seek or something like that but we've got lots of sunflowers already growing on back there and then if I turn around here um, I've also got marigolds and zinnias at the end of every bed the dwarf varieties just to kind of <clears throat> excuse me just to kind of help with pests possibly and then all of these beds are completely planted up oh, you guys I cannot believe that I grew everything in this garden from seed 90% of these cut flowers are totally new to me and oh, I don't know it's just it's so rewarding to have grown all of these things from seed and don't get me wrong there were some things that didn't work like the asters that i had tried to grow four different times and the bells of ireland i had to re-sow six times but most of these things i planted the seeds once and here they are looking beautiful we've got straw let me just take you down each row we've got straw flowers salvia basil frosted explosion grass lots of different varieties of basil we've got lime basil licorice basil lemon basil purple opal basil cosmos i have three varieties of cosmos i have apricot lemonade orange cosmos uh sea seashells cosmos and cupcakes mix cosmos we've got honeywort and then also in the in behind the frosted explosion, I just planted my first succession of gladiolus. Then if we come over here, we have a few different varieties of celosia. 
Uh, Celosia was one of the other things that I had a little bit of an issue just getting them to grow right. Um, they, I don't know, it's like their roots kept like just staying exposed and they were like really floppy and I just, I could not get them to grow like sturdy. They would just flop over and like dry out and die and I just really struggled with with those so I have more in the house that I sewed a couple weeks ago that will be getting transplanted out we've got some bishops flower over there almost as tall as I am <laughs> um, along with the dill behind it um, and I have another succession of bishops flower lace flower and baby's breath right here that I direct sewed We've got Feverfew that was extremely root bound. Its roots were a lot bigger than they looked like they would be. Like the top growth, um, I feel like it wasn't, um, how do I say this? Like usually when you have a certain amount of top growth, you can usually tell like, hey, that's gonna need transplanted. But they still looked really small. And I thought, you know, they, they've got more time before needing to be planted. Uh, but whenever I pulled them out, I was like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of roots. So they're taking a minute to rebound. And then we have some cherry caramel flocks that I direct seeded. We've got some lemon balm. And then we have another succession of dill here. I will see if I have a picture or a clip to show you. It was less than a week ago that I transplanted these dill and they were super tiny and very floppy and leggy looking. And that's one thing I've learned about dill. It always looks leggy no matter how much sun or grow lights you give it. It always seems to be super leggy. But as soon as you get it transplanted, it, it sturdies right up. So don't worry if that happens to your dill. We've got some marigolds and zinnias and lots of weeds that are giving me anxiety. But that is one of the chores that we are going to get done today. So now the sun is deciding to come out. So I'm sorry if there is harsh lighting. Then we've got our bishop's flower this one is a white that's more like a mustard mustard yellow we've got our crane red and crane white kale still looking beautiful I did get uh, some of the leaves did get damaged from some cabbage moths but once I took care of them and got out all of the ones that I could see I haven't seen any more here we've got our Dusty Miller looking beautiful. It's been so long since I've seen or grown Dusty Miller, but I just love, I don't know, it's just, it's so wild how the leaves go from being green and hairless to having that white fuzz on them. Then here we have our Fever Few. I will try to shade out for you. <laughs> It had quite a bit of transplant shock also. It was a little root bound. Then we've got our baby's breath that I'm just now realizing is about to flower. There's so many things that I'm noticing that are different or are about to bloom that I didn't notice before because I've been so busy just trying to get everything planted before it gets too root bound. And, you know, like I said, staying on top of the weeds before they get too out of control. <laughs> Because as you can see, you know, we still have our arbors that we need to put up. Um, I've been trying to deal with the rest of the compost, which I just finished up getting the last of it. Uh, that right there is just going to have to stay because it's, you know, the grass has already grown back up through it. And then here we have our Love in a Mist. This is my first time ever growing Love in a Mist. A lot of these things it's my first time growing them but this is really pretty I love how this comes like above the flower instead of the flower sitting on top of all the foliage it's kind of almost below the foliage 
And then here we have, oh my gosh, I thought that was a bunch of aphids. But this is our bunny tails grass. <laughs> I was about to be like, whoa, that's a lot of aphids. So I just went to get my portable charger and now it is looking like we're about to have a thunderstorm. So it has already went from beautiful overcast to sunny to about to storm. That is typical Southern Indiana weather y'all. But very quickly, I'm gonna try to get through this for you all. All right guys, so it has been a few days. The wind was just like out of control. I had to stop and tie up a bunch of my sunflowers because they were like almost laying completely over and um, it started to rain and yeah, I just, I had to hold off on the tour, but now we are back a few days later and we have even more beautiful blooms to look at. I just love this color. It's a, it's a pretty true blue. It does have a slight purple tint to it, but it's a pretty true blue. These are unfortunately too short to really use for any kind of bouquet, but I think these will be plenty tall enough. And then we've got some baby's breath about to bloom. We still have probably a few days on that, but we've got some Bunny tails grass. This looks like frosted explosion actually. Hold on. I wonder if this looks like this just at first. Like, may no. Maybe I got the bunny tails grass and the frosted explosion grass mixed up because the bunny tails grass I don't think has any like frilly any like frilly things on the grass Ooh, look we're about to have some celosia yay and you will hopefully see that there are a lot fewer weeds in the beds today <laughs> I paid my nieces to come and help weed the beds. We didn't get around to doing the walkways. I told them let's focus on the actual beds first, uh, just in case, and I'm glad we did, uh, or we wouldn't have finished the beds. <laughs> but they came and helped weed and helped, watched, uh, helped watch my little one so that I could get a few more things planted. So here um, I decided to put some zinnias on what will be the inside of the arbor. So the cattle panel trellis will go up. And as you're walking through, you'll have zinnias on the inside. And those are uh, the, the pu pumilla, pumilla, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, zinnias, they stay really short. And then on the outside, I have the hyacinth bean and love in a puff vine. That will grow over. Sorry if you hear my dog in the background. <laughs> so in this bed we have lots of different things. Here we have eight bells of Ireland and then behind it we have black knight scabiosa and the star flower scabiosa from Florette and then I direct seeded some cress some of that is cress, some of that is weeds, but I told the girls to just hold off on weeding that until the crest gets a little larger. And then here we have some bachelor buttons blooming. These are so pretty. These got pretty leggy. They were very, very root bound when I planted them. I love, love, love that color. I have the red, the white, and the blue, which um, I grew those three colors for 4th of July um, bouquets. And then I've also got the classic romantic and classic magic. And then down here we have some stock. And then again, at the end of each bed, I have zinnias, marigolds to try to 
help repel some pests. And I will quickly go over here and show you. We have the basil blooming more than it was the other day. And then we also have some gladiolus popping up. This is the cinnamon basil. And then this is, I believe, this is licorice basil. It has these little, like, lavender buds on them, and it's just so, so stunning. Last year, I grew a lot of this cinnamon basil, which I really liked that green and purple, but this is a lot, a lot prettier and more, like, bold. The purple is a lot more of a bold purple. And then now let's walk back over and look at the last two rows of zinnias and snapdragons. You can see my husband cut the grass and unfortunately a lot of it made it onto the beds. I think I'm going to use landscape fabric next year because so many of those pieces of grass I feel like turn into so many weeds uh, because some of the grass that we have in our yard it only needs a little piece of a leaf, I feel like, and it just sends down roots and starts growing. <laughs> but here we've got lots and lots of varieties of zinnias. I will put all of the varieties I'm growing on or in the description because there are so many. But I cannot wait for all of these beautiful zinnias to be blooming. It's going to be so gorgeous. These that are a little bit larger, these are my unicorn zinnias. These are the only ones um, that I planted from transplants. And then the rest are uh, direct seeded. So here we have our sweet peas, which I think, I think I may have planted too many too close. But I went off of, you know, recommendations from others because I've never grown them before. And... I also pinched them so they would be bushier and as you can see they're getting a little tangled down there but they're starting to put on quite a bit of vertical growth and we have our first blossom which is super super exciting I can't wait to find out what color it is I planted Obon Bay Ah, my mind is going blank now. I swear, every time I hit record. Um, there's, I know it's a, uh, I know that it's a, uh, corally kind of pink. A very light corally kind of pink. And then the Obon Bay is like a light blue. And then a mix. And I have it written down what is where. But that's in the house. And then here, I ran, I ran out of snapdragons. So I put a few more zinnias right there. And then the rest of this entire bed is snapdragons. And as you can see, we've got a couple blooming. I started at the other end. These were the ones that were planted a little bit later than the others. Even though most of them were all started at the same time, those were planted later down at this end. And I think they were a little bit more root bound by that point. So that's why they don't have as much vertical growth. Well, also, uh, remember now, um, I didn't pinch all of them. Oh, sorry. I didn't pinch all of them. I wanted to get some blooms early on. So I left some, like this one you can see, I didn't pinch and it's only got like one really tall bloom but then you can see the ones that I did pinch they're a ways away from blooming but when they do bloom there's gonna be you know five six seven of them all at once and then this one I will have to take down all the way to like right here or even lower 
So I'm going to lose all of this side growth that it's been working on uh, because it only has a couple side shoots. It's going to be a while before I get blooms again. Whereas if I would have pinched it, it would have forced all of the side shoots to be down here, like on this one. So whenever I pick one of these, it's going to have multiple still ready to come on right after it. So that's a little side note on why it's better to pinch, in my opinion. Um, but maybe to leave a couple for early blooms. But I'm definitely a big believer of pinching. But we are definitely going to be having a lot of snapdragons and zinnias, that's for sure. <laughs> and sunflowers. I uh, almost forgot about those. Let me take you back to the sunflower bed. Alright, so here we are at the sunflower bed. So far I have four successions. And then down here I have two mahogany splendor hibiscus that are probably way too close together. But I ran out of compost to fill up this entire section, so I had to plant them a little bit closer. So I have two mahogany splendor hibiscus that my son almost pulled out because he thought they were weeds. Like this from the helicopters. And luckily I caught him before he pulled it out. And then I just threw some marigolds, nasturtiums, and zinnias around it. And then... We have all of our sunflowers. I need to get another piece for that over there. But as soon as we get some compost, I will fill that up with compost and plant more sunflowers. So back to the sunflowers. We have in the back row, we have two varieties that get really tall, like 12 to 16 foot tall. One of them uh, is a variety that I saw Laura from Garden Answer grew last year. Uh, it's called Mammoth Gray Striped. I don't know where she got hers, but I got mine from Baker Creek. Um, it's a variety that gets, like I said, extremely tall, and they get extremely large heads on them. They're just massive, beautiful sunflowers. I cannot wait to grow them. And then I have Mongolian Giant, which is also from Baker Creek. And those will not be for uh, cut flowers. Those will be too big. And then we have four successions of sunflowers. I will put all of the varieties that I planted in the description or on the screen because I'll probably forget a few, but some of the varieties we have are White Knight, Italian White, Pro Cut Plum, Cherry, uh, Cherry Rose, Gypsy Charmer, Velvet Queen, Autumn Beauty, jade and i'm forgetting i'm forgetting the rest so like i said i'll put it on the screen we got a lot of the weeds out of this bed this weekend but there are still a few that need pulled and i'm also seeing that i didn't thin all of them a lot of these i just planted one seed but there were a couple varieties that I went ahead and planted two of each and I'm seeing now like right there I didn't thin those so I'll probably get that done to today all right guys well that is it for the annuals um, I'll probably save the perennial cut flower garden for another day because I just don't have that much time this morning plus my dog is in the background barking but I do want to quickly show you some of these volunteer sunflowers over here in the perennial cut flower garden These guys popped up all on their own. Obviously, they are volunteers. <laughs> Looks like my son left his slush, slushy cup out here yesterday. I have to pick that up. Real life, guys. <laughs> it was dark by the time we went in, so I didn't see it. But take a look at these sunflowers. I am... 
about five four and they are about as tall as I am maybe an inch shorter than I am and it is only what five weeks past our last frost date I mean, you can see, like, these are <laughs> the ones that I planted. So, so massive. Now, these are a branching variety. Uh, so, it's probably either the Velvet Queen or the Autumn Beauty that I planted last year. But, I mean, just look at the massive, massive stalk on that thing. Amazing. And, I mean, they've taken some pretty cold temperatures. Oh, this one's about to bloom. And then I have three fairway spur dahlias. That one there is looking a lot healthier. We've got marigolds and zinnias mixed in. We've also got some variegated nasturtium finally showing a lot of its variegation and looking better. And then here is where my daffodils were. And so I planted zinnias on either side and I figured, you know, to, to be able to grow a little bit more in this space, I would plant them on each side of the daffodils and it would also hide that ugly, dead, dying foliage. And look, we have our first carnations coming on. So I forgot that carnations needed to be netted. I had it in my notes, but then I didn't check my notes when I was planting them out here. And I should have planted them in a way that I could have easily netted them, but I didn't. Some of them are still standing upright and doing well, but some of them you can see they flopped over and will not probably have usable stems because they'll be too crooked. But that's okay. I'm giving myself a lot of grace this year as a learning curve because because there's a lot of things that I you know I don't know about these flowers. So I'm not going to stress about not being able to use a lot of them this year. So here we have some celery that finally started growing like six months after I planted the seeds. <laughs> and it should have been harvested about two weeks ago. Uh, I think I'm going to cut it down and give it to my neighbor for his rabbits. Um, more marigolds. We've got dahlias on this side, down the center, and then on that side with lots and lots of weeds. This is so embarrassing. I cannot believe... I let this get this out of control. But look at these Lizzianthus, you guys. I hope I get blooms. This is like such a long time coming. <laughs> They're finally, finally starting to put on vertical growth. It's so exciting. They've literally just been sitting there at like two inches tall for months. But look at that. They're finally getting... Finally getting some vertical growth. So I've got, I think, seven different varieties, eight different different varieties. Let's see, we've got Echo Pink, Echo Blue, Apricot, Dublini White, Blue, Picote or Picote, uh, Pink. No, I already said that, Echo Pink. I'll put them up on the screen. Then this is the ranunculus bed. As you can see, they did not do very well this year. I had some here down the center and then right there. They were really transplant shock. If you saw in my last video, um, I talked about how I started them way too early and they sat in their trays for too long and I had to kind of like rip their roots apart and it was just too much for them. Like it's okay to rip their roots apart a little bit you know, if they're grown together a little bit, but it was bad. And so they got very, 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 very root bound. So I put lots of marigolds and extra things over here. We've got some amobium. I think I put a couple straw flowers over here. We've got a couple cosmos. We've got gladiolus coming up right here from the previous owners. More weeds. <laughs> um, I have gotten a couple 
a couple uh, blooms off of them, but not many. And then I also planted some more zinnias and uh, sunflowers over on this side of the bed uh, because I know that the ranunculus will be getting taken out soon and then there's not going to be anything growing on this side for a while. So I figured I would put some sunflowers and zinnias to give us a little bit of color down at this end until we have some something being put in there and putting on some growth. All right, guys. Well, that is everything in my cut flower garden. I hope you enjoyed it. I really do appreciate each and every one of you that watch my videos. Make sure that if you aren't already, you subscribe. Make sure if you have any questions that you leave them in the comments. Make sure you check the description if you're curious of any of the varieties that I'm growing. And make sure you stay tuned for the vegetable garden tour. And make sure you stay tuned because I'm getting ready to plant all of my tomatoes. I finally got my tomato bed prepped. And those are all going to be going in the ground this week. Also, this video will probably come out after Memorial Day. So I just want to say happy Memorial Day. And thank you to anyone that has served or is serving. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks again, guys, for watching. I will talk to you guys in the next one. All right, guys, so it's a couple days later. I apologize about the lighting, but I just wanted to quickly bring you in close and show you all of the weeding that I got done. Look at all of those piles of weeds. Oh my. And yes, I'm extremely sore. The back of my legs, oh, they were on fire, but it's like one of those things once you start, it's like you have to finish. Now I did, <clears throat> excuse me, I did leave a lot of the smaller weeds just because those are hard to get out uh, without it just breaking. And they're really too small to try to use that weeding tool that I have. So I just mainly focused on the larger ones and I used, I don't even know if I showed it to you. I used this right here. This was a great buy. So you just stick it in right below uh, like the leaf uh, canopy that that starts right above the ground or right below the ground. And then it has this so you can like get some leverage. So you just let that go like against the ground and then pull up on it and it lifts them right out. Then you shake your soil off. I have a pretty large patch here still yet to do but that is what all of this looked like so I still feel very very accomplished and I have a lot less anxiety now <laughs> I don't know I just I look at every weed as like I said stealing nutrients stealing resources stealing sunlight from my plants I still have a few back here but uh, that's another reason why I've been plopping extra marigolds and zinnias and sunflowers back here uh, because the more shade that is on the soil, the less chance those weeds have of germinating and growing. Oh, look what I found while I was pulling weeds. Our first dahlia bloom, so exciting. And we have two more coming on right next to it. Now, if you want, you can pinch your dahlias and it will force them to branch out more. Like you can see that one has several side branches. You can see that one down there is doing more side branching rather than vertical growth. But this is my first year growing dahlias. So, there's no way that's happening. <laughs> now, in future years, after I've grown them, yes, I will probably pinch them, but these are my first ever dahlia blooms. And I grew all these from seed. If you didn't uh, watch my previous videos, these are all dahlias grown from seed in these two rows. And then those right there are grown from tubers. That sad little dahlia right there it got damaged by the frost and I thought I lost the entire plant, but I just topped off, I just cut off that top growth that 
looked really bad and left it and figured I would just see what it you know what it does and you can see it has two three side shoots so it should look like a nice large healthy looking plant in no time but yeah so back to pinching the dahlias you can pinch them cut them right here and then it will focus all of its energy on branching out and then uh, you will end up with larger longer stems so like this one here this one is going to end up with a really short stem right here in the center but if you pinch it uh all of the side shoots uh that's what people say anyways i don't have any you know personal experience uh, but that's what people say that uh, these will always uh, end up with short stems in the center but the side shoots will be much longer stems it looks like i have something chewing on this leaf Also, I don't know if you can tell, but the Lysianthus seemed to have grown an inch in the last couple days. So, so exciting. I really, really hope that I see some blooms from these. Such, such a slow growing plant, but I think it's going to be a very, a very rewarding flower to grow. Is that a bud? It is! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. That is so exciting. I was so scared that these uh, plants were rosetting, which is where they, they end up, you know, not blooming. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. There's another one. I mean, these are still really short, so, you know, those may not be, like, the longest stems, but if these all actually bloom, I will, I will still be extremely happy, even if they are on short stems, because I was just going to, like, toss it up as, you know, this was just, this was the learning curve, this was just, you know, the year of learning about Lysianthus, <laughs> uh, because, like I said, I thought they were going to be rosetting, so if I actually get beautiful blooms from these that's going to be so so rewarding do you guys see that